Throughout the Bible, God tells us very clearly to be watchful for his soon return. In fact, he tells us that if we are watchful, that day will not catch us off guard. But unfortunately, for a majority of the world, it will catch them off guard. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 9, the Apostle Paul records the following. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Very clearly, we are told, if we are vigilant and watchful, that day will not overtake us like a thief. We are also instructed to look for the blessed hope. In Titus chapter 2, verse 13, the Apostle Paul records the following. Looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Why are we told to look for that blessed hope? What is so blessed and why should our hope be in it? I'll tell you why. Because it is an event where the Lord will remove Christians that are truly his before the coming judgment of God on this Christ-rejecting world. This judgment period is called the tribulation and will take place for seven years. Those that have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are not appointed to this coming wrath. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, the Apostle Paul records, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verses 10 to 11, these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ right here. Listen to this. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. We are told very clearly that we, Christians, are kept from the hour of temptation that shall come upon the whole world. Before this horrific time frame begins, Jesus Christ will remove those that are genuinely, genuinely his off the earth to be with them in heaven in something that is called the rapture. The word rapture is actually not in the Bible. Many mistakenly think that this means that there is no rapture. However, for example, you also do not see the word Bible in the Bible or Trinity, but the concept is still understood. The rapture is very much in the Bible. You just have to know where to look. So let's look for it. Turn with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18, the Apostle Paul records, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. In verse 17, the phrase caught up is translated from the Greek word harpazo and the Latin rapturo. That is the word from which we get rapture. Upon closer inspection of harpazo's definition, we learn it literally means to snatch away, to take away, to pluck away, to claim for oneself eagerly, to seize by force. So when you summarize 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18, literally, Jesus Christ himself is going to descend from heaven with a shout, 
with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ are going to rise first, referring to those who are in Christ that are in the graves. They must rise from the ground to meet their spirits in the air for their glorified body. Then we, which are alive and remain, will be caught up, snatched away, plucked away, to meet Jesus in the air, to be with him in heaven. After this, the tribulation period occurs on earth. The purpose of the tribulation is for the salvation of the Jewish nation. It is a time of Jacob's trouble, not the church's trouble. Think about it like this. For those of you that have kids, if your child was on train tracks and you saw a train moving full speed toward them, you would snatch your kid out of harm's way before that train hits. Likewise, Jesus is going to snatch us out of harm's way before the seven-year tribulation period hits. Why else should we be looking for that blessed hope beside the fact that we will escape the wrath to come and be with Jesus forever? Well, because we will be getting brand new glorified bodies. No more death, no more pain, no more sorrow. I have met many that are in wheelchairs or disabled in other ways that say they can't wait until the day that they will get their new bodies. A day they can walk again, a day they can see again, a day they can move their arms again. How do we know that we will get new bodies at the rapture? Check this out. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 53, the apostle Paul records the following. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. The rapture is truly a mystery. The Bible is full of supernatural occurrences, and the rapture is one of them. These bodies we are in now are corrupted. These bodies cannot enter heaven. So at the rapture, we will be immediately changed and put on our incorruptible body, our immortal body. How fast will this translation into our glorified bodies occur? You just read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. So literally, you will be here one second, and the next, you will be transformed into your glorified body and meet Jesus in the air to go to heaven. Wow. Who is excited for this event to occur? It should encourage each and every one of us. And it should also encourage each and every one of us to plant as many seeds as possible to our loved one and friends because we want them to get saved right now. Yes, they can still be saved during the coming tribulation period, but it will literally be hell on earth and they will be under the severe persecution of the Antichrist and the false prophet and most likely be killed for their faith. The rapture of the church is an event that is sooner than many of us realize. Today is the day to be ready. Your glorified body is coming. But until then, let us not cease to teach and preach Jesus. Tell people that today is the day of salvation. Before I finish up, I want to leave you with a final section of scripture, straight from the words of Jesus and his promise to us. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. If you're watching this video right now and you do not have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back and he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ in him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you, you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians 
chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Belief. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming. And he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.